In this video, we are going to be working through a technical material balance problem. And this is a problem that would be on par with what you would expect to get asked on a chemical engineering midterm or final exam. So this is going to be pretty involved. And to give some background on what this problem is asking us, our goal here is to determine the overall conversion of some species A. And the numbers we are given is that our feed has a composition of two moles of our reactant B relative to one mole of our reactant A, and that's coming into our feed. In our reactor, we are taking that mole of A and we're colliding it with enough, with enough energy in a particular orientation uh, with two moles of B to generate one mole of C. We're then passing the reactor effluent into a separator that has that is perfect so that we get 100% of all the C that we generated in our reactor coming out of our product stream. We're then going to take our unreacted species A and B and then pass them into our cycle stream and move them back into a mixer to mix with our feed so that we can continue to reuse and uh, get the highest yield we can from our reactants so we don't have to purchase as many to generate the same amount of product. And because we have a recycle stream, we will have a purge stream, which I've denoted with W here because it's essentially a waste stream. We're losing our unreacted uh, reactants, but you do need this uh, and you can prove this by doing material balances. And so the other key parameters we are told here is that in addition to our product stream being nothing but our pure product C, we know that our recycle stream has a 0 0.3 uh, percent, or I'm sorry, 0 0.3 uh, ratio, so 30% composition of our species A and a 70% composition of our species B. And finally, we are told that our feed flow rate has units of 1,230 moles per second. So that's 1,230 moles per second entering our process. And so the question here is, how are we gonna answer this question and determine the overall conversion of our species A given all these numbers? And so if you wanna pause the video now and see if you can solve this on your own, I would recommend trying. Um, and if you can do it, you're very well set to uh, do well if you're asked about a material balance on, on a midterm. And so what I'm gonna do now is work through how I would go about solving this problem. So the very first step you're going to take is performing what we call an overall material balance on this process. And what that means is I'm only going to consider, I'm basically going to draw a black box around everything except our inlets and outlet streams. And that's because uh, if we do a mass balance, we know that mass is conserved because we're not doing any nuclear reactions here. And so what I can do is kind of simplify our problem statement down into a black box with a feed going in and a product stream and then a waste stream or a purge stream exiting. And so why do we do this? We're going to do this because our first goal here should be determining what the feed flow rate of our reactants is. And so um, based on this information, what we can see is that we're told that YBF over YAF must equal two. And we also know that because the molar compositions must sum to unity, what that means is that YAF plus YBF must equal one. We can make use of the definition if we do the cross multiplication here, we can see that Y BF is equal to 2 times YAF. And I'll try to write nicer. Um, but what we can say now is we can plug in and substitute YBF here. So we'll have YAF plus 2YAF must equal 1. Therefore, 3YAF must equal 1. YAF, therefore, is equal to one third, which is equal to 0 0.33. And because you know that YBF was equal to two times YAF, that means we can say that YBF must equal 0 0.67 because the two terms must also sum to unity. 
Okay, so that's very important. And now what we can do is actually get a uh, feed flow rate, a, a feed molar flow rate of each of our species. And so if we do that, and we multiply this term, what we would get is F a F is going to be equivalent to 0 0.33 times 1230. And this term is going to be equivalent to 403 moles per second of your species A. We do the same calculation for our species B. And what we'll find is that this term must be equal to 827 mole per second of species B. And so the reason we're going to want to do this is because now we're going to make what we call a stoic table. And so in our stoic table, we're going to have one column dedicated to our species, another column dedicated to what's coming into our process, another column for what's changing, and a final column for what's leaving our system. And so the species we have present in our chemical process would be A, B, and our product C. We know now what F AF is. We've calculated the actual numerical value, but I'm going to leave it in these terms here. We also know that we have um, FBF in our feed stream. And then also we're going to make the assumption that no product C is in our feed because our goal is to make it. So we wouldn't make it if we already had it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say that we're going to assume that X mole per second of A react. And a key theme you need to remember with soy tables is that we're going to base all of our calculations around our limiting reagent. And so in this example, uh, because our feed stream has uh, slightly more B than is necessary, a will be our limiting reagent. And so what this tells us is that uh, I'm going to substitute in X and we'll also recall what reaction we have going on here where we have one mole of A colliding with two moles of B forming a mole of C. What this means is that I'm going to react X moles per second of species A and if I react one times x moles per second of species A, I'm going to need to be reacting two x moles per second of species B. And we're going to be generating for every one mole of species A, one mole of species C. So we're going to have plus x moles per second of species B being generated in our process. And this quantity or variable I've just defined x is going to be very important in us determining what our overall conversion is later on. And so now just adding across the rows, leaving our reactor, this would be stream N. So our stoic table is going to be uh, referring to this. We're going to have FAF minus X. We will we'll also have FBF minus 2X. And finally, we're going to have X moles of C per second exiting. And then the important intuition here to recognize at this point is that this quantity X, because our separator was perfect, sorry, means that all of these moles of C that we're generating are going to be exiting in that product stream P. So therefore, X is equal to the flow rate for your stream P. And the next key intuition to have at this point is going to be recognizing what stream T is. So in our process, we have stream T right here. Stream T is going to consist only of these first two streams that I've written here. So stream T is going to have um, so stream T, which is the stream leaving our separator that isn't our product stream, consists of this FAF minus X and FBF minus 2X. And a key thing to remember with these 
process diagrams is that when we have something called a splitter, the composition of all streams is the same. And so what this means is that while the actual molar flow rates of, I'll just call these streams one, two, and three, may not be equivalent, their compositions must be equivalent because there's no reaction occurring in your splitter. Therefore, the molar composition, assuming these streams are well mixed, meaning homogeneous, uh, is going to be the same for all of them. And so this is very important because if we'll go back to our problem statement, we were given this very critical piece of information here where they told us that the composition of species A in our recycle stream and species B in our recycle stream was 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. And so if we wanted to determine what the uh, composition of species A is, and in this case, three corresponds to R, one will correspond to T, and two will be our purge stream W. We were told that YAR was equal to 0 0.3. And what we get from our stoic table that we drew is that this 0 0.3 quantity must be equivalent to FAF minus X divided by FAF plus FBF minus 3x. And so what this means is that this is the moles of A remaining divided by total moles remaining. And this should make uh, intuitive sense if you really uh, ask yourself this because you have the number of moles of A over the total number of moles of A, that must be equivalent to the molar ratio of A, which is a quantity that was given to us. And so with this given quantity, what we can now do is evaluate for uh, X. And so what we'll do next is make use of the uh, numbers that we evaluated a few minutes ago. We know that FAF had to be equivalent to 403. So we'll have 403 minus X divided by, and then we also know that FAF plus FBF is nothing more than FF, the total feed flow rate. And that was equivalent to 1,230 moles per second. And we're gonna be subtracting this from three X because uh, we've essentially reacted three moles of our limiting uh, we can prove this by looking at our stoic table above here. And we know that this quantity has to be equivalent to 0 0.3. And so from here, it's just an algebra problem to figure out what X is. And so we can evaluate this quite simply by multiplying both sides by 1,230 minus 3X. So we'll have 403 minus X is equal to, and then 0 0.3 times uh, 1,230 is equal to 369 and then we're gonna have the minus and then 0 0.3 times 3 is 0 0.9 X now if we add the 0 0.9 X to both sides and solve for X what we would find at the end of the day is that X must be equivalent to 340 and this would be moles of A per second. And so we're almost there in terms of answering our overall question, which was what is the overall conversion of species A? And so to get the overall conversion, so X, which defines our term conversion, is equivalent to whatever reacts minus whatever you put in. And so X, is the mole of A that reacts. So this term will be equal to 340 mole per second. And we're gonna divide this by what we put in. And we already know what we put in, that was 403 mole per second. And so this quantity as a whole must be equal to 0 0.84. And so what this means is that 84% of, of A reacts in our process. And so this was a uh, 
work through of this problem statement and it involved making a stoic table and relying on our material balances, but we were able to get our answer, which was the overall conversion of our species A, that had to be equal to 0.84. So as a whole, this process is pretty good. It's getting us an 84% conversion of our limiting reactant. I hope you guys find this useful and thanks for watching.